Okay, you see before you, on page 62 of this Essays and Metrical Paraphrase, on the left, the revised version as it was in 1878, done by Conant. That's what you see in the previous pages who, who did this. And on the right, this is the new author's, you know, who's also a doctor. This is what he was teaching in class. And he's calling it a paraphrase because technically it differs from the so-called revised version. All right? In other words, he's using the revised, not the authorized. And this is Job 3.3 3, where he starts to meter it. That's not how the Bible does it. The Bible starts the meter early. But maybe in some passages it starts after the first couple of verses. And the reason why I know that is because that's how Paul does it. Ephesians 1, 3 through 14 is metered. Ephesians 1, 1 and 1, 2 are not metered. Now, Anonu Nominon, who found the Matthew 24 meter text, disagrees with me. He thinks that Ephesians 1 and 2, verses 1 and 2, are also metered. And I haven't looked up his claim to, to validate, you know, maybe he's more... You know, he's got it right. It could be. All right. It really could be. But the point is that this content of evaluating the syllable counts in the meter is nothing new. But it's not being used to its full extent the way it ought to be. So here in 1878, a guy was teaching his own congregation, the Plymouth Church in Brooklyn, his paraphrase, what he's calling a paraphrase, because he's comparing it to the Revised Version, of Job 3.3 3 in this particular case, which I looked up in the Hebrew. Okay, so now let's look at the paraphrase. Count out the syllables. Perish my day of birth forlorn. That's eight syllables. Perish my day of birth forlorn. Eight syllables. The night which said, a man-child born. Another eight syllables. Okay, you got that? Perish my day of birth forlorn. The night which said, a man-child born. Let's try, count it all again. Perish my day of birth forlorn. The night, that's ten syllables, which said, a man-child born. So 16 syllables. Now, the Hebrew I got is between 20 and 22 syllables depending on whether you elide some of the consonants. Like for example, today the pronunciation of Hebrew is not the same as it was in the text of the Bible. In the Bible of Deuteronomy 6.4, for example, it says, Shema Israel. Well, they don't say it that way today. They don't say Shema today. They say Shema. So they've condensed two syllables in the one syllable. That's an elision. They're eliding the first syllable and just smushing it. All right? And they don't say Yisrael anymore. They say Yisroel. There's, there's been a tendency of Jews to pronounce A sounds as O sounds. Okay? Like it's Rosh Hashanah in the Hebrew. But they say Rosh Hashanah. And I grew up saying it like that too. Okay? But it's Rosh. The actual word for head, beginning, is Rosh. All right, not Rosh, but your average Jew today pronounces it Rosh Hashanah. Okay, Ha means the, Shana means year, head of the year, Happy New Year. Okay, so the pronunciation difference is there. This guy is saying that if he's keying it to the Hebrew syllables, it's 16. Okay, here on the left, and this is what I found more interesting, watch this. Perish the day wherein I was born. That's nine syllables. You got that? And the night which said, 
a man child is conceived. So that's nine syllables and eleven syllables for verse three. That's a total of twenty. The Hebrew text can be read as twenty syllables up to twenty two. I come up with twenty one. There was one syllable that was easily elided. If you look in your modern Bible for Job three three, you will find out when you count the syllables that it will be somewhere between 22 and 20. It will not be 16. So what that tells you is that this guy's paraphrase for the first verse, he didn't care so much about the count of the syllables as he did about the poetic meaning in English. So he condensed it to two sets of eight. Eight is a very important number in Bible meter, but he doesn't seem to know that. Or maybe he does. But this one is more close to the actual Hebrew count. This is 20 syllables here on the left-hand side. Revised translation. And it's closer to your modern translations if you look in your typical English Bible for Job 3.3. You'll get somewhere between 20 and 22 syllables, which is the how you could read the Hebrew. Between 20 and 23 syllables. And like I said, I read it at 21. Now, if it's true that this is the first time that Job is lamenting and, and metering, because it's the first time he's being quoted, and it could very well be, because it's his words rather than the writer, you know, pre giving a preamble. At 21 syllables, okay, at 21 syllables, Job is datelining his first date. Okay, there's always two date lines in a in the meter. And they're both divisible by seven. The first one and then there's a the second one. And in this case it'd be twenty one years from X. Could be that he's playing a parallel between his own age when he was born again and the age of his one of his sons, who he liked a whole bunch, who was twenty one at the time he's talking. Okay? It could be making that play. It could be 21 years from something else. It could be 21 years to something else, but it's more likely from the past. I have no idea what that 21 really is. You'd have to read more of Job and abstract more of the meter to know. The biggest problem what we have with the book of Job is it, a lot of people think that it was written before Moses. And they have trouble dating, you know, what, how old is the book of Job? So it's going to be really important to be able to evaluate that date, that date line. And I don't know. I mean, because I haven't, I haven't started doing the meter on Job yet. The point I want you to see is that there is recognition even in your current translation of today, 2016. They are trying to count the Hebrew syllables like this was done in 1878 here, but not done in the paraphrase here. And he's coming up with 20 syllables, which I can see, you know, how he got that. Your modern translations also are between 20 and 22 syllables for this verse. So somebody, even today, is aware that it's important to count the syllables they just haven't figured out that, hi, maybe you count the syllables all over the Bible, or at least in the first chapters, because they tell you when the book is written. And the theme, the count, will relate to the text. So that's why I'm saying, well, okay, this 21 might have to do with one of Job's sons, who just been killed. All right. And now he's got the scabies or the boils on his skin. And now he's finally, you know, screaming. And he's picking 21 and he's even metering what he says. So even though he's screaming, he's still thinking scripture. Now you start to understand why God praised him at the beginning of Job 1 and 2. All right. Now I didn't abstract the, the Hebrew for this versus this for verse 4. Okay. I just want you to see that the principle applies and you can go yourself and look at the Hebrew yourself and count the syllables yourself and then look at your translation and see, oh, are they trying to match the Hebrew syllable counts? And if the answer is yes, and it should be, if it's here, it ought to be continuous. 
if it's here and they're matching the syllable counts here what happened did the brains turn off if even in modern translations they're trying to count the syllables in Job and in Psalms why don't doesn't it dawn on them hi maybe you want to count it in other books of the Bible too and instead what do they do to this day they keep saying well what kind of poetry style is in scripture honey it's not a question of poetry style if you're counting the syllables and they end up having a number that sevens that should be significant to you you should say well gee if it's happening here in sevens because we saw it in the Psalms okay and now we're seeing it in Job and it's sevening if it's sevening then maybe that's a style pan Bible. Well, then start counting the syllables in Genesis and you'll find out, oh, wow, Moses is doing the same thing. And it's not some kind of poetic style with strophes and all the other nonsense that you're expecting. Yeah, and what does that tell you then? That the counting of the syllables is how they preserved the text. So the words Moses wrote, the words Job says here, can be verified and copied over and over and over and over and yes we have the same words because honey when you're measuring by sevens that shows intent peace out